And here we've come to question 10 of our VCAR 2019 chemistry exam. Question 10 is a notorious question for being a tell me everything you know about a particular topic in no particular order type of question. Basically what you're presented with is, is a bit of information and a large section of where you can write your response. Actually it's in the back here as well. Now, each question part here, there's normally two parts to a question 10. One's worth um, about half a mark to the question and the other one is worth about the other half. These are relatively large marked questions for um, a chemistry exam. But the thing about that is you don't actually need to worry too much about it because all you're gonna do is write everything you know about a particular topic. So, first of all, let's look at what this topic is. Climate change has been identified as a threat to the environment. We've got fossil fuels recognised as a significant contributor to carbon dioxide, so it's about fuels. So I'm going to move on from there and work out what the question actually is. Using the chemistry that you have studied this year and the information presented above, which is these quotes and things like that, discuss the carbon neutrality and sustainability of using biofuels as a fuel for transport. So. I'm pretty much gonna ignore a lot of this stuff here because I know a lot of stuff about carbon neutrality, sustainability, and biodiesel anyway. So I'm just gonna start by writing everything I know about this particular topic. So what is biodiesel in terms of carbon neutral? All right, biodiesel, I'm gonna do it in dot points as well, which is um, not what you do for a lot of other exams, but for chemistry, dot points are really helpful. So biodiesel, you should know the fact that it is produced from plants, is produced, produced from plants. Um, for example, the um, oils. Okay, what this means is, is, is can be considered and can be considered carbon neutral due to the same amount of CO2 being absorbed um, while the plants grow. This is not really well written, but while the plants grow, as is released when the fuel is burnt but it's highlighting why it is carbon neutral. So I'm gonna be talking about why it can be considered carbon neutral. So that's one part here done. I've talked about the carbon neutrality of it. Now, um, it's discussing, so let's move on to the next part, the sustainability. All right, so biodiesel can be, what is sustainability? Sustainability is about the fact that you can use it for a long period of time and it won't run out. So it's more like about renewability. Um, be produced, produced in a more sustainable way due to the fact um, plants can grow in a short period of time, period of time. So we're talking about the fact that biodiesel is a renewable fuel. Um, I can say this makes it renewable. Um, in that case there. So I'm talking about the fact that it's um, renewable. Let's go on to the next part, which is about biodiesel being used as a fuel for transport. Let's talk about the fact that biodiesel is a fuel for transport. It's got a relatively low um, heat of combustion. It's gonna be not release as much energy. So therefore I'll say that biodiesel has a relative, relatively low energy content content compared to fossil fuels and thus more would be required to go a set distance. Okay, so this is where I'm talking about it as a transport fuel. I could also in here um, discuss 
a lot of other things. So let's go through, I've actually got three marks here. I'm just gonna try and then, I might elaborate on each one of these and put a, put a um, disadvantage for these things perhaps as well. But let's go with um, the fact that the renewability, or so the carbon neutrality of it, I could actually put a point against it. Um, I'm gonna talk about that now. The fact that um, biodiesel, um, I'll say while biodiesel is chemically, chemically carbon neutral, it actually in reality, in reality, um, some fuel may be required to um, harvest the crops, thus cannot be considered truly, truly, I spell truly, I don't know, um, carbon neutral. So that's a kind of a thing going on, discussing it. it. Well, it is kind of carbon neutral because we're absorbing CO2 from the atmosphere and technically, chemically speaking, we have the same amount of carbon dioxide absorbed as is produced when we burn it. However, because we need to actually farm our uh, biodiesel, our oils to make our biodiesel, maybe it's not truly carbon neutral in that sense. I am also going to then rebut another area here, the fact that um, biodiesel can be produced sustainably because it can be grown in a short period of time. Um, I'm then going to, am I going to rebut that? I'm not necessarily going to rebut that, but I'm going to say the fact that um, while we can produce um, crops in a short period of time, a bad thing about biodiesel in this case is the fact it's gonna take up land which could be used for growing food. Um, it will require large amounts of land and water to produce. Therefore, reducing its sustainability, sustainability. And again, what I'm doing here is I'm running pretty much everything I know about biodiesel um, in that case. What else have I got here? I've got the fact that biodiesel has a relatively low energy content. Another thing about transport is that biodiesel is a much more viscous liquid and does not flow well in low temperatures. Um, and I'm just gonna go back to this question. So does it actually ask me to, to explain this chemically? Using the chemistry I've studied. Okay, so now I need to kind of go and talk about why and add chemistry to it. So I'm just gonna add some chemistry to um, two of these things. Why is it a low energy content? Because um, it is already um, partly oxidized. That adds some chemistry to respond to why it has a low energy content. I'm also gonna, then gonna talk about um, these other things here. That's fair enough, that's no need for chemistry in there. But with our viscous liquid, I'm gonna also say because it contains the um, ester functional group, group um, which therefore increases the amount slash strength of the intermolecular forces, forces. So therefore I should hopefully cover the chemistry required that I've got in there as well. So rather than just going through um, and basic definitions, I'm gonna include the chemistry. But this question, um, I'll, I'll re repeat myself again, is a say everything you know about biodiesels and try and link it to carbon neutrality and sustainability.
So therefore, I've got at least four marks, if not um, more, but I can get a maximum of four marks there. I would suggest, um, yeah, dot points to hit each point as you can, as you need it. Next part of the question, part B. Hazelnuts are a tree crop grown for many years in Mediterranean environments as a tree nut for food. They've been investigated as a potential sustainability and high yielding feedstock for biodiesel. So we're going to get the oils out of our hazelnut and transfer it into biodiesel. This species is well adapted to less productive soil, which is a good thing and a high amount of very good quality oil. Um, in addition to oil yield, we have a unique fatty acid composition, which is a high in monosaturated fatty acids, um, predominantly oleic acids. So we've got monosaturated fatty acids. Let's talk about that. Petrodiesel from crude oil has mainly categorized as this, which is C12H24. What have we got to do? We've got to compare biodiesel. So we're going to compare the two um, produced from hazelnut oil to petrodiesel in terms of chemical structure, energy content, and that. So I've got three clear things I need to do. Let's first of all work out chemical structure. So chemical structure will be my first subheading here. First dot point in this. And we're gonna first of all start with our biodiesel. Biodiesel, um, and what is a chemical structure? It is a ester, I'm gonna use a different color here. I'm gonna go back to blue. It is an ester. Um, actually, let's go with a methyl ester, because methyl ester produced um, from a fatty acid. It has an um, C to bond to O bond to C, this basic structure. All right, it has an ester functional group. I'm gonna try and highlight the structure that it has. Whereas with my, um, my hazelnut oil, uh, sorry, my petrodiesel, petro, Diesel. I'm going to be talking about the fact that it's a straight chain chain hydrocarbon um, with no sorry no functional groups. Try and highlight that. Now I did say it's also monosaturated, so therefore it contains and contains one carbon to carbon double bond. So I'll include that in here as well. So there's the my chemical structure. It's a methyl ester versus a straight chain hydrocarbon. That should give me my arcs for talking about the chemical structure. Energy content per kilogram, let's discuss that. Um, and we'll go with this one is energy content. And our first point is biodiesel has a lower energy content. I talked about this in part A. Content due to being partially oxidized. Um, it has the ester group. Having that ester functional group, the C double O here, means it already has some oxygen in it, so therefore it's partially oxidized and therefore has a lower energy content. So therefore, our petrodiesel, on the other hand, petrodiesel must have a much, has a higher energy content than our biodiesel. But therefore, hopefully I've hit the mark on the um, energy content there. And now let's talk about flow through fuel lines. Alrighty, and again, let's go talk about biodiesel first, because that's where I'm starting each time. And I'm gonna say that biodiesel has a high viscosity and low flow through fuel lines. And this is due to it being a, um, due to higher intermolecular forces, um, which are dipole-dipole forces. 
um, due to higher, higher uh, intermolecular forces, which are dipole-dipole, um, because of the ester functional group. The ester functional group provides that ability for my ester to have dipole-dipole forces. It's an area of polarity within our molecule. And then I'm going to talk about my petrodiesel. Petrodiesel. And I'm going to talk about this having um, a low viscosity. Yeah, it's, it's not very thick. Low viscosity. So therefore it's a high flow um, or easier to flow. Okay, so therefore we can say the fact that why is it easy to flow due to only um, having dispersion forces, forces which are weaker weaker um, than the dipole-dipole, dipole-dipole forces. So therefore, I've hopefully I've explained enough to get my five marks. Let's go out, where do you think my five marks are gonna come from? I think I'm definitely gonna get um, marks for explaining the differences between them for three marks. And I think I'm gonna get a mark for explaining why um, we have a, Different in difference in energy content. I think my fifth mark is probably going to come from why do we have different viscosities. Alrighty, so that allows for um, my five marks. But again, what I'm doing is I'm just identifying what I need to talk about within my um, petrodiesel, so biodiesel. I'm comparing petrodiesel and biodiesel, and I'm just writing down the things that I know about that. Particularly if I can identify each little section, it's really clear that I have actually hit those marks there. I've used chemistry within my answer, so I've tried to explain it in chemistry, and that's where I think I'm getting my fourth and fifth mark, because I've included the rationale to do with chemistry. Question 10, in my opinion, is one of the best questions in the exam, because as I said, it allows you to write everything you know about a particular topic um, and show your understanding. So provided you've done your study, you should be able to come up with some stock standard answers which can answer question 10 pretty well. And that's it for the 2019 VCAA chemistry exam.